what's valuable but also rare but is in high demand brings a lot of stability and of course many of you want that hey guys welcome to biotechnica today we are dealing with something which is highly rare highly valuable very stable everybody wants it but problem is it comes so rarely yes we are talking about government jobs in biotech in india well i'm sure you what you're thinking right now it comes once in every 4 years out of the blue and then most of the time you will find yourself not eligible and even if you are eligible tens of thousands of people have applied so what's the solution how do you get a biotech job in government sector right public sector so that burning pain today i'm going to solve so now whatever i'm going to share with you is out of my own experience of talking to people who became successful in doing that and also people who became unsuccessful in doing that and also i'll give you shortcuts and not just the long cut okay so long cut definitely i'll give you which most probably you will also be knowing but then i'll also give you shortcuts okay now uh, the people whom i spoke to Uh, one of them is a ceo right now in aims delhi okay so um, that person started with a regular biotech career and now he's a ceo then i also spoke to someone who is head of birac then who has worked as a head of birac and started as a very humble uh, career in the beginning somebody who was a editor in a magazine and now is heading a big organization in biotech in government so uh, I, and of course one of my friend is in aicte um, handling as a director there so i'm going to talk about how do you get government biotech jobs because i have interacted with all these people and many other people who failed of course i cannot take names but they failed because of obvious reasons even that i'll discuss and how can you strategize to get these jobs so let's freeze it these jobs are rare and if you are just targeting this that's the biggest mistake you'll make so don't just target that you need to have a side income or side job while you prepare for these government jobs but here is a trick which you should know you have to subscribe to biotechnica because all these government jobs in biotech will come at only one place biotechnica and it's very simple all you have to do is go to biotechnica subscribe you know uh, the subscription link is btnk.org/subscribe it can be given in the description also you can log in there and you can check all these notifications okay now if i say that uh, these notifications come every 4 years but that also means that government has hundreds of departments so there is likely chance that this month some vacancy came right so uh, you have to keep checking biotechnica now first things first let's understand the landscape okay and we'll go the long cut now and towards the end i will give you the shortcuts okay so the long cut is see all the government jobs in fact most of them require a phd so you cannot deny the phd part okay now there are two ways of to do phd one is csi in it another is you do through the private universities and that might take a, a little a lesser time maybe 4 years but csi in it uh, based fellowships and uh, phd has got a lot of value and uh, that is where recruiting bodies like dbd icmr csir icar drdo isro UPSC state public service commissions FSSAI CDSCO all these um, organizations will hire you now uh, like i said the frequency is 3 to 4 years and the positions will be like 10 or 15 maximum best case scenario i have seen 50 positions so how do you get there so of course you need a phd apart from phd you need to have a strong technical foundation so core subjects you have to study uh, applied knowledge you need to have more 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 of the these organizations are agri based or medical biotech or bioprocess based or regulatory affairs so you have to you know work in these directions if you want to get into cdsco then you need to have your drug inspector that drugs related information solid okay so now apart from that of course like i said you need to qualify some exam like gate and csir it will help you qualify the interviews because even if you do a phd from a private university when you'll apply uh, well uh, you might get rejected because you've done it from a private university you know uh, the people who will be hiring would be would have a csi net so they will be like okay maybe csi net has a better value so that's something you should know now 
another uh, long cut thing will be of course parallel skill building so you, you need to build your skills on computers uh, bioinformatics artificial intelligence machine learning regulatory affairs because most of the biotech jobs in government will be regulatory affairs and clinical research compliances so quality knowledge so you this will be useful for cds co uh, FSSAI, DBT regulatory wings, and then you need to have a very strong research experience. Okay, so that you can gain well while you're working in any of the research labs. Now, timeline would look something like okay, you first qualify CSI net or DBT, ICMR or net on gate, and then you uh, do your PhD, which should take four to five years. Then you, uh, you know apply for some scientific positions in the same host institute or you wait for the government biotech recruitment exam whenever that happens right but you know the odds will be most of the time against you because uh, the government jobs are uh, rare and if it is your only plan that's where most people fail so i had someone who targeted the central government biotech jobs failed for five years then targeted the state government uh, biotech related jobs failed there for three years and now after eight years he was still unemployed and he was in his 30s right so that becomes a problem so never do that now coming to the shortcuts okay so the shortcut is all about strategy okay so like i said if government job is rare and if government job is uh, so valuable so a lot of people will apply and it will be very less right so it is coming very uh, not very often and so many people applying means you don't have a chance right so there are three key factors these are three shortcuts you should remember if you want a government job the first is when the government is going to form a new department or a new organization or a new infrastructure okay they will be requiring a lot of people there right so you need to be the number one in that particular list right and how do you do that of course networking reaching out being present there right being available all the time so that people know okay this guy he has a lot of these skills Let, let's hire him right so you know they won't go for headhunting or uh, you know they don't have a hr team mostly the recruitments will happen through referrals when whenever a new department is opening so for example like i told you uh, one of my friend so um, she just had a phd in biotech and then all she did was she worked as an administrative officer in one of the universities that's all and she had of course research experience during her phd right so when this new aims were opening in different parts of the country okay she applied right and uh, she got it in her home state okay in aims and of course now she has uh, got moved to delhi so what really happened here she she was at the right place at the right time she was ready with her phd okay phd is done research experience is there and now i have administrative experience so like i said three things in government will happen the first is whenever they are forming a new administrative unit or a research unit or a lab or so something like that right so whenever they are doing that they'll require more administrative people that's the first level of hiring they'll do the second is they will hire a lot of researchers there that's where the phd comes into picture and the third would be when they hire regulatory people or compliance people so that's where uh, you have to keep your eyes open now depending on your skill set either you can specialize in food because food related inspectors are will be in demand in the future or drug inspectors so you can work with cds cu and upsc right now in both the cases you need a very good knowledge not of indian regulatory affairs um, rules and uh, compliances policies you need to know the entire global regulatory environment right and that is why biotechnica has the global regulatory affairs training internship where you can you get trained for the first 45 days and then you do a project internship which will be valuable when you're applying for these jobs details are given in the description uh, this month itself 21st of august it has started you can check it out now apart from this now we have the food side so you you will have to prepare yourself for the fssi food uh, inspector or food analyst exam right junior food analyst exam so for that also biotechnica has a training program again the details are given in the description so either you go the drugs way in regulatory or you go the foods way in the reg uh, regulatory so both ways you have the training programs which will help you get a job so 
uh, you know, uh, let's assume that this is 2025 and the next opening is going to come in 2029. So what can you do in between 2025 and 2029 so that you get that job in 2029? Okay, let's strategize this way. So the first thing you need to learn a lot of cross domain functions. Okay, the second would be, of course, learn a lot of regulatory and compliance functions. And the third would be gain research experience. That's very, very important. And it is uh, immaterial from where you do, but you must have it on your CV and they're going to ask you questions. See, mostly when the recruitment board sits, they will comprise of senior scientists of CSIRs and all these guys, right? And they are going to look at your CV. They're going to ask you relevant questions. If you're able to answer, you get that job. Okay. So that's about um, all of this long cuts and shortcuts. But there is one special premium shortcut which can help you sit next to the Prime Minister of India. Okay. And for that, you don't have to go through all of this process. Okay. One of my friend works in the principal scientific advisor's office. Okay. PSA's office, which advises the Prime Minister related to all the scientific activity in the country. Right. So now, how can you be there at the PSA's office, Principal Scientific Advisor's office, or you can become the Principal Scientific Advisor. The starting salary of a Principal Scientific Advisor goes up to, you know, two or three lakhs per month, apart from a lot of perks and facilities you get, right? So now the question is, as a biotechnologist who is getting started today, how can you be there by 2047 in, um, in the Principal Scientific Advisor's office? There are two ways I have seen, okay? The first will be, uh, gain research experience, do PhD and of course um, get in some administrative role or regulatory law role or a compliance role okay and rub shoulders with the top notch um, bodies like DBT, BIRAC, um, CDSCO, FSSI all of, all of these okay CSIR or go abroad okay go abroad get your PhD postdoc and then there try to work in some big uh, organization which is funding a lot of scientific startups okay like biotech startups one of them is bill and melinda gates foundation one of the largest funding agency private funding agency for the startups in biotech space right so what government sees is somebody who has experience of uh, giving funding okay so even that is a great role which you can get in. You can become direct head of BIRAC or get into the principal scientific advisor's office. So basically one of my uh, friend is working there as well. So like I said, what he did is he did PhD from Bangalore, IAC, then went abroad, did his postdoc, got hired by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Okay. And then he worked at various uh, roles for complete 20 years. Okay. And then when, when the right time came and he wanted to return to India, this vacancy came, Narendra Modi's government came up with the vacancy for One Health, okay? And uh, I've taken his interview also um, on Biotechnica, you can check it out. So he applied there and now he's working there. So his role is about bringing the concept of One Health into India as a new concept. You can Google it out and you'll know. So yeah, so this is about the shortest shortcut which he did because he really didn't go for any government exam or all of that long cut okay or preparing and waiting and thinking when the notification will come he just uh, i would not say got lucky but he was built for it okay if you want to get into that top notch and sitting and advising the prime minister of india i think that's a great pride for you right and it's it's a great um, honor to be working for your country at that level right where the policies are framed so you can even get there and a lot of money salary honor comes your way so let me know which uh, shortcut or idea you liked and if you have any other ideas or shortcuts let me know in the comment section which so that we can share with others as well now uh, whatever you do like i said three important knowledge you need to have cross domain computational knowledge because computers are going to be the biologists of tomorrow so you need to have a lot of computational biology bioinformatics ai ml knowledge you need to have regulatory affairs and clinical research compliance knowledge if you want to get into the food side then you need to uh, you know get training for the food analyst entrance exam for fssi and if none of these then go abroad do your phd postdoc work for some big guy okay and wait for five ten years the moment there is a vacancy nail it and you know you you could become the ceo of uh, aims or um, big organizations right icmr csir um, uh, cdsco BIRAC, all of this right so you know 
everybody has to start from a to z i'm not saying that whatever shortcuts i told you are the only shortcuts and this will definitely work for you i'm not saying that all i am saying is if you want to keep your um, hunger alive for a government job you need to go to the private sector first you need to gain a lot of experience apart from what you do in your phd if you get into the academic side and become a professor you are never going to get into this these kind of government jobs of, of course a prof professor is also a government job but not that kind of a government job all right so this is what i wanted to share with you uh, today uh, now let me know in the comment section what exactly you want from me because i'm in touch with a lot of people in the bio tech and pharma industry and probably i can help you understand things better so that you succeed better so at biotechnica we proudly say that your success is our achievement so let's make that happen by coming together comment below what you want next i'll make a video for sure for you all the best take care keep shining